okay so good morning students today we are going to discuss about uh, the answers to the questions you had for uh, discussion on the topics fatty changed liver we concentrated on fatty changed liver yes. then uh, calcification dystrophic calcification there's monkeberg's uh, medial calcification then uh, one more was hyaline uh, change so leomyoma yeah. with hyaline change previously you know these terminologies were called as fatty degeneration calcareous degeneration and hyaline degeneration you now the terminology degeneration is replaced now with uh, change you know because this is like accumulation yes we'll move to the first uh, uh, slide we'll see the first one before that uh, dr rajesh is uh, here with me and then uh, dr meenakshi they have contributed uh, uh, questions here for the assessment or discussion let us say discussion yes why we use the term assessment when students are there is we know that assessment drives learning so when we say assessment when we say test then only you know they get activated whether it is a fear factor that activates or uh, whatever so that's why so let us see uh, the slides uh, the questions which are there uh, in the slides yes the first one was uh, uh, this where is this uh, yeah question can you read out the question uh, rajeshri sharma 48 year old male you have to observe all the pictures clinical pictures a uh, few clinical pictures and gross and microscopy which are given here and come to a diagnosis relate all the pictures come to a diagnosis mention the etiology of the same and pathology of the same yeah so this picture you know was provided to them i said observe the clinical <laughs> features and then all the pictures are revealing his uh, story yes, yes so about this picture this picture uh, students said you know they knew about this gross appearance and microscopy so by looking at this uh, they said fatty liver so this was not for uh, fatty liver so we provided this uh, picture to talk to them or tell them about uh, the it's a hot belly right? that is a beer, beer belly. belly so when asked they said beer belly so this is the etiology now the gross and microscopy specimen are uh, consistent with the uh, fatty liver but we have given them the etiology they all said alcohol as the etiological uh, factor so alcoholic liver disease then when it comes to beer so we told them how the excess calories the person uh, ingests in the form of uh, you know gulps or uh, you know drinks bottles of beer so the calories extra calories so when he does not work or no exercise or sits in front of computer and does some work sedentary habit mm -hmm. so that adds to or that gets converted to fat and uh, it gets ac accumulated on the abdomen i remember i think old books you know when we were reading the boyd's pathology he gives a uh, very nice you know he says lemon on a matchstick so when you see an individual with uh, such a pot belly you know we say sign of prosperity so much of fat and you also know that he drinks lot of uh, you know uh, beer so that is lemon on a matchstick when they don't eat anything emaciated and only yeah. consume uh, uh, this is that but our students could not correlate uh, this right mm -hmm. then i told them we make fun of men who have this spot belly right mm -hmm. so i asked him what is epnd <laughs> maybe this was our zamana which was using this so that is like ever pregnant never delivered <laughs> they have a protruded uh, abdomen and it's all because of fat uh, it's not uh, pregnancy so ever pregnant uh, never delivery is one thing so yeah we have started with the uh, some nice opening uh, yeah. remark <laughs> like this. yeah this is to create 
that it was an interest slide ma'am like to yeah. correlate mm-hmm. to give them the chance to correlate yeah. this is the way we learn pathology and this i did like f- these were the first time they we exposed them to write a story by giving the pictures yes so the answer was alcoholic liver disease or even fatty liver or steatosis etiology the said alcohol so gross the liver was enlarged rounded borders and cut section enlarged liver rounded borders cut section yellowish even this is yellowish and this in addition showed greasy appearance then microscopy was these are the normal hepatocytes mm-hmm. look at the hepatocyte nuclei a very nice vesicular nucleus prominent nucleolus mm-hmm. we always say epithelial cells also have vesicular mm-hmm. nucleus prominent nucleoli germ cells have vesicular nucleus prominent nucleoli hepatocytes you know knowing this morphology helps us uh, to identify the primary when we see metastatic uh, deposits and all these uh, hepatocytes have eosinophilic cytoplasm whereas the rest of the hepatocytes have a big vacuole in the cytoplasm so this is the fat that has accumulated there and uh, the nucleus is pushed to the periphery it's just looking like uh, adipocyte so i just showed them this uh, you know ring and asked them what it is they were able to say it is a signet uh, uh, ring and uh, why is this appearing as uh, clear vacuoles we are telling that the hepatocytes contain fat but where is the fat it's all empty now only this bottles are full and the beer mug is full but the <laughs> cells don't have fat at all so this is because uh, fat gets dissolved during processing that is uh, when we are making glass slides so we put the tissues first the operated specimen or biopsy is put in formalin for fixation it's an aqueous uh, fixative so next after fixation to remove the water we dehydrate we take it to alcohol it is at this stage that all the fat gets dissolved you know for peaches we say actually formalin doesn't have any action on uh, uh, the fat so here after we take it to dehydration it dissolves so then to remove the alcohol and to bring in another uh, uh, vehicle which is miscible with uh, paraffin we use xylene it clears the tissues also that also could act uh, on the fat but main it is fat so then we take it to paraffin so for uh, impregnation and then embedding so this process fat is lost this was very easy for them and now uh, i think they know only alcohol as a etiological factor <laughs> that comes to their mind but important thing is uh, another thing whether this change is reversible irreversible see many people with this fatty liver and large liver they get scared and they go to the doctor so at this stage we should tell them it is reversible so at least you know be away from all this and then uh, eat adequately so it is not just uh, the alcohol that is uh, uh, that has to be taken but what to do people replace no they spend all the money on alcohol and they yeah. have nothing to eat at the end again you know i remember uh, boyd as students we were reading boyd uh, <laughs> you know that was like a bible for us and uh, pathology he says uh, i think it is uh, gin without food and not gin with food that causes uh, fatty liver yeah. that means the importance of nutrition, nutrition. has to be taken as stressed so well by uh void there anything else you want to add here this congestion also but we didn't uh, tell them about Mention. this clear by cause yes so this was only for the <laughs> reference as to uh um, yeah how many calories are there in uh, uh, beer really? so they they can uh, go on doing uh, a literature search on this yes serving size 12 ounces uh, it is 153 calories and uh, higher alcohol the craft beers but 12 ounces 355 ml as 172 350 i think it 
it is written on the bottles i don't know i'm not mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. need to see that yeah the second uh, uh, was we just gave them only microscopy here mm -hmm. this was a tough one to crack for our students mm -hmm. only microscopy this is also liver histopathology and we gave history that patient with acute liver failure and liver biopsy is done it shows finding also was given mm -hmm. see individual hepatocyte if we see so the multiple tiny vacuoles within the liver mm -hmm. so this was microvesicular fatty change so till now what we showed them was macro vesicles and uh, i was just telling them in kannada we say hani hani gududre alla so initially this starts like micro vesicles only later they all coalesce to form a micro vesicle then the macro vesicles coalesce to form a larger vesicle they may rupture also mm -hmm. that's how we say uh, this can lead to fat embolism also when, when that fat is just ruptures so they could appreciate this is a nice uh, picture we took it from the net of course mm -hmm. mention the etiological factors but few students did answer this question they said the uh, race syndrome, race syndrome. they had uh, learned race syndrome this is only to tell them the etiological factors so this shows uh, macrovesicular steatosis microvesicular steatosis so actually even alcoholic uh, fatty liver steatosis starts with microvesicular change mm -hmm. only later it becomes a microvesicle so acute fatty liver of pregnancy race syndrome this is the one which we wanted them yes. to know mm -hmm. salicylates sodium valproate tetracyclines so drug induced microvesicular fatty change aflatoxins inherited disorders of fatty metabolism mitochondrial cytopathies all these uh, causes they know for mm -hmm. macro vesicular steatosis so there is another uh, slide again giving examples etiology etiology for micro vesicular fatty change there are, there are so many at least one or two if they remember especially the drugs which are used so commonly that definitely helps them so this was the third question we had asked we are asked to identify the stain the first slide described the normal fatty uh, sorry the fatty layer in the hnd section and figure 2 and figure 3 were special stains we asked for color as well as stain yeah of the color so this is normal mm -hmm. now uh, this uh, slide you know microscope this has played holy right we said let it speak of color for now so we wanted them to identify the color and mention the stain which has given rise to this color and uh, they were taught well so this was uh, very easy for them to answer they said red oil red o then black sudan sudan black but the question was next question yeah this was the answer let them answer yeah mention the type of sections to be taken to demonstrate fat yes okay. now initially we know that fat dissolves mm -hmm. because of protein processing while making paraffin sections but how did this fat come there the clear vacuole they had uh, mm -hmm. tough time mm -hmm. uh, answering <laughs> this they didn't know next we have to show the frozen section did anybody answer frozen section no no but yeah they didn't know and yeah it told them instead of uh, the tissue tissue needs some support you know when we have to cut it use a, a using a microtome so usually that uh, in normal processing it's a paraffin that gives support so here uh, uh, we use of course a uh, cryostat medium plus the water it makes it a block so immediately this can be given we will we'll teach them how uh, frozen section later moving on to the next one uh, in this uh, question ma'am uh, we had provided the uh, clinical pictures uh, add, uh, asked to identify the pathological or organ and the next we provided the gross and microscopy of the same and uh, 
put an arrow and ask to uh, identify, identify only the that. So because now we are uh, teaching them only calcification, yeah. right? Whether pathological or uh, metastatic identification. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So this is uh, female. They all said thyroid. So why we had put a picture of female and that? Because to make them know that uh, thyroid lesions are very common in females. Organ was identified because anatomy. They yeah. know what is there. Even otherwise, you know, common man knows about yeah. uh, the thyroid that is in the uh, neck. So this is gross appearance. Arrow pointing at gross appearance. That is the um, calcification, chalky white, chalky white uh, specks which are seen. And then microscopy, so both uh, showing calcification. But they didn't know the name of this uh, calcified uh, area, so some of our bodies. But they could make out concentric uh, lamination or rings. So when the analogy of uh, tree was given, mm -hmm. when we cut the tree and look at uh, the layers that are there in the uh, stem, mm -hmm. this is that talks about the age of uh, mm -hmm. the tree. So here calcium gets deposited at uh, varying intervals. So this gets progressed, this is an itis calcification starts here, mm -hmm. yes. then it gets one layer, so calcium accumulates, and it's a progressive one. Mm -hmm. So next another layer, that's why this forms concentric laminated rings and uh, the samoma bodies. So more about some bodies later. Now it's only to give them the correlation that's all you know how microscopically it appears this was a very easy one for them mm -hmm. but next was special stain for identification i was asking them what color calcium uh, takes up with hnd they all said some said blue some said purple and so purple was catchy for them yes, <laughs> even some said black <laughs> made them to tell it is black yeah when it gets concentrated no the color uh, definitely Black looks uh, different. Yeah. Special stain, they knew about von Kosa stain, which uh, is a silver stain. And any silver stain, the end result, the end product is a black yeah. color. So this is picture of uh, von Kosa that is given. Then alizarin in red. It stains uh, calcium a red color. Okay, uh, the next question was, uh, the history was given in this, 75 year old male came with the low back pain and urine examination showed Ben's Jones proteins and uh, the histopathologic picture was provided and in that uh, we uh, told to identify the cellular content in the picture given. But so many things, no? Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. They were, uh, maybe we <laughs> wanted them to <laughs> talk about this. So this is a 75 year old male, mm -hmm. elderly male, low back pain cause for concern. Mm -hmm. So urine examination, Ben Jones proteins, they have learnt in biochemistry mm -hmm. that it is a case of or Ben Jones proteins are seen mm -hmm. in multiple, multiple myeloma. Yeah. Yeah. So but now you know we wanted to tell mm -hmm. them which is the cell of origin. So multiple myeloma, so proliferation of plasma cells and these two they didn't know this was just the electrophoresis you know the M. M. Some people even read this and said gamma, mm -hmm. the M protein. Mm -hmm. So now these two are definitely giving a conclusive diagnosis of multiple, multiple myeloma. myeloma. But we wanted them to appreciate this was taken as an example for hyaline change, mm -hmm. intracellular hyaline change. Yeah, plasma cells and uh, what do plasma cells uh, secrete or produce? It is immunoglobulins or they can even say antibodies. So immunoglobulins getting accumulated within the plasma cell. When something gets accumulated within uh, the cell, it pushes the nucleus to the periphery. This is very well uh, you know, appreciated by them. And these were the Russell bodies. Example for highly in change, intracellular. So they could be extruded out and they can be seen extracellularly also. This is one where we can see the fat here. Russell body intracellular accumulation. Yes. So this is the seventh case which was given. It was a two year old male child presented with muscle pain and cramps during exercise. On examination liver was enlarged, biopsy was done. We had given a picture of the biopsies. The first 
after picture in this depicts the normal um, liver and we have told HND stained liver and uh, we had said hepatocytes uh, show presence of glycogen we asked them to name the disease and special stains to demonstrate the pathological substance in the hepatocytes yeah it's a child muscle pain and cramps so mother has observed some abnormality in the child during exercise that is during activity. activity child is so active you know you can't put a two-year-old child mm -hmm. in a particular single place yes. where not ah. even five minutes you know yes. keeps scrolling moving walking <laughs> two years yes mm -hmm. so pediatrician has seen and uh, the liver is enlarged mm -hmm. so I was asking them how does a pediatrician know that liver is enlarged they said palpation and they could show us <laughs> And uh, for a definitive diagnosis, a biopsy was done. Yeah, this is HND stained uh, sections, and uh, there are more pictures. The liver was, I told them, liver was sweet. Mm -hmm. I have never tasted any human liver. Who would uh, taste <laughs> cannibalism? That's all. Okay. So they knew the diagnosis. They said uh, glycogen storage disease. Some stu students even said periodic acid uh, shift stain, PA stain, so periodic acid uh, shift stain, and uh, extra pictures which were provided. So, this is with PA stain, or after this is being stained with PA. Recently, we had one uh, child, November, I think, mm. we had a CPC also. PA's positive uh, substance is very well seen in the hepatocytes. Now, how do we confirm that whatever PA has taken magenta color with PAS is glycogen? Mm -hmm. So, we know that glycogen is diastase sensitive, mm -hmm. others are diastase resistant. resistant because liver, when we see this granules, alpha 1 antitrypsin, mm -hmm. um, also, you know, we need to see. Okay. So, this is a section which this one which was stained after digesting this all the sections were treated with diastase and then it was stained with HND so most of the cells which showed positivity the substance has disappeared so that says the substance is yeah PA is positive diastase sensitive it is glycogen I was just telling them, you know, if uh, diastase is not available, how we, we use the saliva, now COVID, no saliva, you know, nothing, we should be uh, careful. So, we were asking PGs uh, to spit uh, on the slide, you know, use saliva, spit on the uh, slide and then, because you need to treat it with uh, uh, diastase. And anyway, the same person who does the stain would be using uh, oh. <laughs> it, you know. so I was telling them before having food or before uh, breakfast so that all enzymes would be there otherwise it gets used uh, for uh, uh, food yeah, this is a nice case intracellular for intracellular accumulation you showed them glycogen, glycogen. Okay, fine. yeah the next case was uh, a female 60 year old uh, known diabetic and also the known case of Cox who had completed her treatment and now presented with a cough and enlarged lymph node. Mm -hmm. The clinical picture was shown and the histopathology showed an arrow was pointing at a calcification and they uh, No, asked you, you asked them to uh, identify uh, what, what it is. Uh, I was not happy with this microscopic <laughs> picture. <laughs> you didn't replace it. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. This uh, they identified which group of uh, lymph, lymph nodes. nodes okay even before palpating or touching it is nodular mm. and uh, how it is seen i don't think parotid comes in that region yeah they said no, it no, is no, a no, lymph no, node no, no. yes so lymph node biopsy the question here is known case of cox so we told them don't write as tuberculosis because even the common man can mm. understand yeah. tuberculosis, yeah. tuberculosis leprosy and all so we replace we use the terms cox and uh, hansen's and all that she has completed her treatment now she is presented with cough and enlarged. See, diabetic immunosuppression, she is prone for infection. Mm -hmm. And she had infection, she has completed the treatment. So that is the effect of this. Mm -hmm. So healed lesion with calcification. Mm -hmm. And the color, you know, it, this is where it is appearing blackish yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they said, what type of calcification? She is dystrophic calcification. Mm -hmm. 
so healing where calcium gets deposited in dead mm -hmm. and degenerating tissues yes that they could uh, identify mm -hmm. so now she is presented with coffin enlarged lymph node that is reactivation uh, oh, you know of uh, tuberculosis, tuberculosis reactivated uh, lesion now but this was easy for them mm -hmm. they could they but could adding uh, more uh, to the etiology which is told uh, about uh, immunosuppression mm -hmm. this is a nice one this is a 30 year old female presented with pain in the abdomen and low, lower back she also gave history of heavy menstruation uterine myomectomy was done we had given uh, both gross and microscopy asked them to write identify the gross and microscopy yes picture. so gross and microscopic picture but this looks like history hysterectomy mm, only hysterectomy. right mm. because the <laughs> uterine cavity yeah. is <laughs> cavity is here even i i could not mm. uh, make out yes, hysterectomy. so this was uh, to show them multiple leomyomas mm -hmm. which are there mm -hmm. so myoma leomyoma fibroid all these are terminologies but we use the terminology leomyoma Clinician keeps telling, uh, uh, gynecologist calls it as fibroid. And this picture was clear. They could appreciate the trabeculations. Now, uh, the entire lesion is not showing, tumor is not showing trabeculation. Here, there is loss of trabeculation. See, even here, there is loss of trabeculation. And microscopy. Microscopy, this is a prominent. See, the eosinophilic areas are standing out prominently. This was extracellular. Hyaline, mm -hmm. something that looks eosinophilic or pink, yes. structureless, homogeneous, glassy, okay. is hyaline. Okay. So we wanted them to identify this. The nature or the composition varies depending on what we do special stains and find out. And all these were uh, the spindle-shaped spindle uh, cells. Yes, with mm, the smooth muscle proliferation here. Mm -hmm. Last uh, class they were talking about the hyperplasia. Yeah. So <laughs> this was neoplastic proliferation uh, mm -hmm. here. Yes. Smooth muscles are proliferated but it's neoplastic. They enjoyed. Maybe questions were less or uh, this topic was easy for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of them they could answer right. more majority yes. of the questions. Yes. <laughs> That was nice. Thank you, uh, Thank Rajashree you. and uh, Meenakshi. <laughs> now, we are enjoying, I yeah, think, uh, 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 teaching with <laughs> more than uh, uh, the students. Uh, nice exercise, I think. CBME, uh, yeah. A lot of work mm -hmm. for the teachers, yeah, but the way we are <laughs> teaching yeah. is uh, different. That was good. So, thank you, Rajashree, and you, uh, thank you, so much. Thank you Meenakshi. <laughs> thank you.